So, brothers and sisters, I've so far spoken about the easy patience. The ones that you got no other choice but to turn to Allah and be patient. But did you know that the real hard patience, the real struggle, is in the times of comfort? Is in the times of comfort. When you have everything. When everything's going good for you. Or so you perceive that. You know, to Allah there is no good or bad. We interpret what we want to interpret as good and bad from our eyes. I've seen and we have been in this situation when somebody their business is going well they've got mashallah children who are growing up and getting their education and they're making a good life for themselves and when the money is coming in and they're investing mashallah properties are going good for them profitable their health is good their looks are good their marriage is good their house is beautiful their car is nice I've heard people say Wallah yimkin Allah bihibbu laha shakhs Wallah yimkin maybe Allah loves that person Have you heard that before? When things go good for you someone comes up and says Allah must love you Allah must love you for preventing this or that from you Allah must love you for giving you and blah 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 How? How did you know that Allah is loving that person or hating that person. Who told you? Did Jibreel come down and give you wahi? Where in the Quran or in the entire Sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ does it say that if you live in ni'mah, in comfort and provision and luxury, it means that God, Allah loves you. Or if you live in poverty and hardship and struggles, that Allah hates you. We see from the prophets and messengers, many of them who lived in both types of lives. Among them is the great two prophets who were kings and were very powerful. Prophet Sulaiman and Prophet Dawood alayhim as -salam. But listen to what they said. Sulaiman alayhi salam says when he received the kingdom, he said, O oh people, we have been given from everything. Utina min kulli shay. Allah has given us the blessings of everything. Kulli shay, everything that a human, you and I, perceive as a blessing and goodness in this world, whatever we interpret, humans interpret, Sulaiman salam said, we have been given the goodness of everything. Not only that, he understood the language of, of, of the animals. But then he said, I know that this is a test from my Lord. An ibtila. He changed my state to another state with this enormous power so that Allah can test me. Will I be grateful and thankful or will I deny and turn as if I am the one who is self-sustaining myself? You know, it's not enough just to say, thank you Allah. I've heard some of our brothers and sisters, they say, Wallah brother, I always say thank you. I'm always, oh, and they kiss their forehead. This is a custom we do. I thank Allah every day. What do they thank? They say, Alhamdulillah. It's a good word, but what is the meaning of Alhamdulillah? I'll tell you what the meaning of Alhamdulillah is. Alhamdulillah, O oh Allah, for the past things that you didn't give me. Do we think like that when we say Alhamdulillah? The past things that you didn't give me, that I missed out on. Because I know that, oh Allah, had you given it to me, it would have not been better for me. So I trust you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the things you have given me. Because it only came from you, and had it not been for you, I wouldn't have it. Alhamdulillah for the things of the future that you will give me. And Alhamdulillah for the things of the future that you will not give me. Already, I'm thanking you now before it happens. Do we think like that? People say, yes, I do. But subhanAllah, Allah then makes you go through a trial to see for yourself if you really meant it when you said Alhamdulillah. So He takes something away from you. And then what happens? 
My brothers and sisters, when comfort comes to us, this is the real test. Because when everything's going for us, we have this thing of losing sight of our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ الضُّرُّ دَعَانَا دعانا لجنبه أو قاعدا أو قائما فلما كشفنا عنه الضر فلما كشفنا عنه الضر مر كأن لم يدعنا إلى ضر مسه كذلك زين للمسرفين ما كانوا يعملون. And when we try man, when we bring down upon a human being a type of harm, they turn to us in eagerness. While they're on their sides, lying in their beds, they turn to us. They turn to us standing. In dua, in prayer, and they turn to us sitting on the floor. They turn to us in every way. And then when we release the harm away from them, he or she turns away, forgetting, as if no harm had ever befallen them. Allah says, <laughs> and this is how the state of human beings is a lot of the times.